pick this their team selection what they think is going to be best then with a brand new series and a brand new format there's going to be just so many different you know pokemon that i, I expect to see especially in the earlier uh, stages of the tournament so i think we are ready to get into the first match of today's broadcast so let's get started yes let's jump right into this game between james maney and phil win james leading out with hatterene and indeedy and let's see what Phil decides to use. We file and we sing. All right. We and gas hitting the field. Yeah, so exciting to see that. That is actually one of the you know ways to shut down Hatterene and Inidi. Now you can't take advantage of that psychic terrain and go for expanding force. So Weezing, once again, not a Pokemon we see very often, but shutting down the psychic terrain coming out from Inidi. It's actually going to be that Dynamax coming out from Weavile as well, so a lot of offensive pressure immediately on turn one. Of course, one play that James can do to get around this is potentially just something like a Follow Me Trick Room on the first turn. Uh, depending on what the rest of his Pokemon is, I think this is still a decent position for him if he has, you know, Silver Pokemon in the back. But it looks like it's actually going to be a Dynamax coming out, so I'm putting on some more offensive pressure. And if you can't set up the terrain through Indidi, well, you can always screw it through Hatterene as well, though. Uh, in this position of G-Max Smite is also a very strong option. Yeah, so pick Pokemon already for both Phil and James. Um, but it, it is really interesting that James is going to go ahead and use the Gigantamax already with Indidi using Follow Me, going to take away that offensive pressure from its partner as Weevil goes for the Max Darkness. And indeed, he doesn't take that one too well. Will be a clean knockout there. And uh, the special defense for Hatterene going to fall. For Sludge Bomb to hit. And that does a significant amount of damage. But Hatterene goes for the max Mindstorm here onto the Weezing. Wants to take it out immediately and does just that. Able to remove that Galarian Weezing from the field and set up the terrain. <laughs> that was an incredibly fast-paced turn one. Both players trading knockouts left and right. And once again, I mean, we're seeing a Dynamax Weavile out on the field. I think just the combination of we Weavile and Weezing is not something we've really seen at all throughout uh, the series. So very exciting to see that this Weavile is putting on a ton of offensive pressure. And so, yeah, surprised that, you know, James didn't commit to the Trick Room option. But uh, perhaps if the Hatterene wasn't focused slash, he was worried about the combination of Max Darkness and Sludge Bomb. So... Uh, Porygon now a pretty good Pokemon defensively. One play you could make here on James's end is simply just go for a max guard on the Hatterene and maybe a Trick Room. Uh, Phil could maybe read into that double up onto the Porygon, but one of the reasons why Por one of the reasons why Porygon is so good in this format is because it's very difficult to knock out, even if you, you know, mm -hmm. potentially go for a double up onto it. So I think James clearly opting for a Trick Room team, uh, and whereas Phil's team is a little bit more fast paced. So uh, even though James wasn't able to get Trick Room up successfully on that first turn, I think. Uh, he's still able to go for a relatively safe max guard trip from here. Uh, Phil could, of course, try to double up into the Porygon, maybe pick up a knockout, uh, but I think it's unlikely that even a double up will knock out Porygon because it's just such a bulky Pokemon. But, oh, no max Ooh. guard! It's actually an ally switch! Well, that's one way to potentially protect Hatterene as Weavile does go for <laughs> Darkness, but it's Hatterene that takes it and it survives! Yeah, it survives, but still takes up a lot of damage. I think, you know, James was hoping for the double up here. <laughs> yeah, the double up goes into the Borgon slot, so Phil expecting a max card there. Uh, and James gets punished really heavily, losing his Gigantamax mm -hmm. Pokemon immediately. And uh, yeah, I mean, I have to wonder if there was no Trick Room on the Porygon, uh, because I felt like max card Trick Room was just the super safe play there. But even though that you know, Phil, like, predicted that. I still don't think a double up is even knocking out Porygon, but I guess one thing that James might have been worried about was something like a Max Knuckle and an offensive Arcanine with that increased attack stage going to Flare Blitz into the Porygon. So, Ally Switch, not something you see super often on Porygon. It wants to run Trick Room Recover and then two attacking moves like, you know, Tri Attack, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt. Zoom Roll is the last one, but we will we'll get one last Max move off here. So, Ally Switch not working out there very well. No, but Porygon 2 is able to take that Max Darkness really handedly and. It is going to allow Porygon 2 to stick around for just a little bit longer as Arcanine goes for Ooh. the Boomless, but Azumarill avoids the attack. Azumarill gets to go for a play rough here, and Weavile barely hangs on. Even after that super effective attack, Porygon 2, because it was able to survive, gets this Trick Room off as well. 
Yeah, that's a big turn there. I mean, missing uh, Willow as Bond to Azumarill makes it a lot tougher. Azumarill now actually maybe a prime Pokemon to sweep under Trick Room. Uh, Phil has relatively speedy Pokemon out on the field. You can very easily just go for a water type attack into Arcanine with the Azumarill. Porygon can easily target the Weavile. So despite James not or losing his you know, Dynamax slash Gigantamax Pokemon so early on in this game, uh, this is the pressure of Trick Room. Azumarill is one of the best Trick Room sweepers, even as a non-Dynamax Pokemon. I don't know what mm -hmm. item it has yet, but often see something like an Assault Vest or Life Orb, for example. So, uh, yeah, I think right now, James actually in a really commanding position because of that will o -Wisp Even if the will o -Wisp connected, I think it's still pretty tough because uh, there just doesn't have much damage at this point. Yeah, all of that uh, damage, <laughs> unfortunately. With, whoa, whoa, what is this? That is a Steel Roller coming out and removing the terrain on the battlefield as Porygon 2 for James goes for the tri-attack into Arcanine. Just a little bit of damage oh, there, but gets the freeze! <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, surprised that James opted to go for... Like, the, that target selection, I think it made more sense to target down the Arcanine with a Water-type attack there, just because... Uh, you know the Arcanine's Willow is, you really don't want your Azumarill to get burned. Steel Roller is a really cool option on Azumarill to not only do a lot of damage, but also get rid of the terrain. Uh, it's obviously a very unfortunate freeze on the Arcanine, so there are many reasons why tri attack is a very strong attack. So, I think for James at this point, you have the Porygon Mirror, you just want to knock out the Arcanine, and, you know, Weavile's one attack away from getting KO'd as well. So, just pick up knockouts and then force the 2v1 with your Porygon and Azumarill against those, uh, you know, long form again. Mm, Azura goes for another play rough, and ah, uh, Arcanine able to hang on and put itself in its berry range, so will be able to heal up just a little bit with the Agua Berry, but try attack again into the Arcanine and does not get a chance to hang on because it's a critical hit. So even if that Arcanine was able to unthaw, it's not going to be able to do anything this turn as. Bills, Porygon 2, going to go for the recover here. Bring itself back up to full. Allow itself to stick on the field for just a little bit longer as Weavile has to come back out in Arcanine's place. Yeah, Phil definitely not having the rules go in his favor. I think James, surprised to see him not go for a water type attack there last turn. Perhaps he doesn't have something like Liquidation and Waterfall and only has Aqua Jet. I think that critical hit mm -hmm. actually also secured the knockout on Arcanine, where if you don't get that crit, then at least... Uh, you know, Arcanine potentially has a chance to fall out, maybe go for a burn onto a zoom roll. So, uh, because, as you saw, Phil's Porygon was able to get that special attack boost, I think this was a game, actually, in which, like, Porygon maybe could have, you know, 2v1'd if, uh, Azumo gets burnt there, but it's really tough to win this game. Yeah, Aqua uh, does come out and will secure the knockout onto Phil's Weavile. Uh, and the try attack now comes out from Phil's Porygon to just to do some damage oh my to James's, but it survives. Yeah, there's a lot of damage there, though. I mean, this is why Porygon is a really impressive Pokemon. I mean, it is a 2v1 now, so and Porygons often have recover. You also have to play around Ally Switch, although I don't think that's mm -hmm. super relevant right now. Uh, and there is the liquidation, so yeah, I'm surprised Azumarill wasn't going for that earlier. I felt like James could have just gotten more free damage off, but uh, now, yeah, the question is whether Phil's Porygon from 2v1 it has that special attack boost, but uh, Porygon 2 on the opposing side is just able to heal all that damage consistently. Yeah, even though that it's a lot of damage. Oh, oh, a crit <laughs> comes out for the try attack So that actually eliminates James's ability to bring that Porygon 2 back up to full with Recover. Is this try attack going to be enough, though? It's kind of coming down to the wire. Yeah, and I mean, Azumarill, if it only is using Liquidation as the strongest attack, I think Porygon will actually be able to pull this off. So let's see, it's a lot of damage from Try attack Here's another Liquidation. I mean, Phil's Porygon has Recover, so I think we should actually be able to clutch this out through a combination of Recover. But there's a defense drop as well! Oh. That's huge! Oh my god. Yeah, goodness. that is huge. <laughs> it kind of forces Phil to have to use Recover here in order to bring itself out of range of getting knocked out. But... James is able to fire off another attack here as it goes for another I, I, round of liquidation. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I think, it, it, you know, you called it exactly right. If the defense drop doesn't come out that turn, then you should just be able to try attack twice more and win. But now you have to recover every turn slowly so that you don't get KO'd by something like liquidation or aqua jet. And uh, now with James going for liquidation every turn, you know, you increase chances of obviously getting def uh, defense drops. You can crit at any point as well. I think another defense drop would really just spell out doom here for Phil, and so 
I, I mean, yeah, I think Phil realizing that, hey, I can't stall out the liquidation, is just going for the tri attack. He's gonna either need a high damage roll or maybe a critical hit or a status condition. Let's see if tri attacks is able to do enough. It's not. Ooh, it's not. The liquidation comes out from James's Azumarill. Um, but Cory got two hangs on. That hangs on. So the Are question go for is the recover can... here? Yeah, can it take an Aqua Jet? Let's see. Here's the Aqua Jet coming up from the Zoom Roll. Defense drop from the Porygon, and it is not enough. <laughs> oh my goodness. What just happened? What a really down to the wire finish for this game one between James and Phil. I, I really kind of expect in this game two. We are at match point already. James, if they take this game, will take the series, but still has a chance to come back here, playing very, very well by bringing the Galarian Weezy the first time and might prove to be necessary here as James does bring the Hatterene in and Didi, but Phil switches it up, brings out the Arcanine and Porygon 2 immediately. Yeah, so different lead this time around, realizing, hey, Weavile is pretty frail. It's going to go down pretty easily. And I think Phil maybe recognizing that, uh, you know, James, had he made some safer plays, would have been able to have a far you know, better advantage. And so, a poor got out here pretty defensive, but uh, there is the threat of expanding force coming out immediately, right? Like, Phil has Snarl mm -hmm. to decrease the special attack. He can potentially reverse Trick Room with his Porygon, get some damage with five attack. But uh, I don't know. Like, the tricky thing here on James' end is do you click Trick Room on this first turn uh, out of fear that Phil might reverse the trip immediately you could just go for something like a double expanding force just to get some damage off on the board uh and try to bait phil into going for that trip room you could obviously go for something like a, a follow me or a trip room but i think in this position a uh, pattern isn't really threatened that much offensively so uh, james definitely has options you know you never want to really take a snarl especially with two special attackers but uh the upside for james is that there's not much offensive pressure coming out from phil's end right now yeah, we'll see what James decides to do for this first turn of the game. As Snarl comes out from Phil's Arcanine, and indeed he goes for the expanding force here. Gonna connect with both Pokemon and, and just decent amount of damage to both. But you can see how that drop kind of mattered in, in terms of how much damage ended up coming out as Trick Room from Hatterene. Yeah, so James committing to like Trick Room anyway, not really worried too much about Phil potentially reversing the Trick Room. You know, Phil had gone for that Trick Room, it'd actually be in a really sweet spot where you can get another Snarl off. Uh, that critical hit on Sandy he actually did a lot of damage as well. Uh, you know, but Phil... Porygon isn't really a much threat, so you could pretty easily reverse the Trick Room right now. Uh, even a double expanding force won't pick up the knockout onto Porygon. However, it might potentially KO the Arcanine or anything that switches in. So it's a pretty tricky spot because, yeah, Arcanine is really at risk of just maybe getting knocked out here. Uh, and with the nature of Phil's team, you know, like, the Weavile is really what really wants to come out and do as much damage as possible, but a hyper-offensive team, or a team revolving around Max and Weavile is pretty tough, so looks like Phil's actually going to commit to a different option here. Not something we see very often, but, you know, is a possibility a lot of players sometimes think about, and that's Dynamaxing Arcanine. This is a pretty defensive Arcanine as well, so mm -hmm. doing it really to stick around on the field for a little bit longer, recognizing, hey, I've already chipped away a little bit at, on James's end, then uh, I don't really need, like, the most offensive Arcanine to pick up knockouts at this point. So, really interesting decision. We're seeing a lot of different Pokemon in the meta right now, getting that Dynamax factor, but double expanding force here, just chipping away at those health pools as Max Flare comes out now into James's Ndidi, able to get the knockout. And we'll see what, how much damage Porygon is able to do. Yeah, so the Dynamax on the Arcanine now allows it to survive the double expanding force, and Porygon is able to successfully reverse the Trick Room, so... Yeah, this is a really cool example of how you should always keep your uh, options of Dynamaxing flexible, right? Mm -hmm. Phil decides to actually commit Dynamaxing Arcanine, realizing, hey, Weavile, even if I reverse Trick Room, still gonna be in a pretty tough spot because of that Porygon, but... Uh, the advantage for James this time around is that he does have the potential to you know, go for a Dynamax on the Hatterene, might even want to switch out, might want to Dynamax that Azumarill in the back. Porygon's also taken a lot of damage, so probably going to want to try to recover off at this point. Uh, as you mm -hmm. see, yeah, Phil opting for the Max Flare and Recover, pretty safe play. I really have to wonder if the Hatterene here can potentially take a Max Flare um, in the Sun, because, you know, if it, if it Dynamaxes, it surely will be able to, but even if it doesn't Dynamax, like, you know, Arcanine looks like it's still a pretty defensive variant. I think you really need to keep your Porygon out on the field if you're Phil's then, on Phil's then, just to heal back. So let's see if Max Flare is enough to actually pick up the KO in the Hatterene. Oh, Ooh, no, it's not enough. 
uh, as Porygon 2, as we saw before, is going to get the chance to get the recover off. But Hatterene surviving is really big here, as Hatterene gets a chance to go for another expanding force, just again chipping away at those health pools for both of these Pokemon. But with the recover from Phil's Porygon 2, it does bring it out of range of getting knocked out, as James's Porygon 2 opts to reset the Trick Room. So Trick Room War is happening now. Yeah, James clearly playing for an end game where he wants to stall out Phil's Dynamax and potentially sweep with that Azumarill. You know, Azumarill is the last Pokemon in the back. So the goal basically is this time around, uh, you know, your Porygon isn't doing as much damage. I've effectively stalled out your Trick Room. I'll have the Trick Room advantage. And what I love about seeing two Pokemon knowing Trick Room is, yeah, whether either player calls it correctly and like reverses Trick Room on the correct turn. Expanding Force comes out here and Arcanine survives with one HP, but wow. a double will knock it out. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been a clutch survival there had that Porygon 2 from James's side not gone for the try attack just to be able to get the knockout. But Porygon 2 <laughs> reverses the Trick Room oh. once again. <laughs> <laughs> it's the classic, you know, how to shut down Trick Room. Just uh, use your own Trick Room. And Porygon being you know, one of the bulkiest Pokemon in the game, especially with that email, mm -hmm. it's so difficult to knock out. So uh, it allows Weezing to come in for free. However, James's Porygon has not taken any damage yet. But Phil has that taunt on the Weezing, a very, very clutch attack. One thing you could do right now is just taunt the Porygon, try attack onto the Hatterene, and uh, go from there, right? Uh, the Porygon on the mm -hmm. opposing end can't go for Trick Room or Recover. It's not doing much damage either, so I love the Weezing bring here, I think. Uh, able to put on a lot of pressure, and Phil actually you know, has that Shadow Ball as well, uh, which is super effective against the Hatterene, I think. It would guarantee the knockout onto that slot. So uh, that taunt's a really big deal. However, of course, Phil doesn't have Dynamax anymore. James still has Dynamax, and I'm really wondering how do you deal with something like a Dynamax and Zoomero in the back, because that's going to be able to put on a lot of pressure, and I think it starts with recovering with the Porygon after this turn. Mm -hmm. oh. But Porygon 2 goes for the ally switch! Whoa! Going to be able to switch places with Hatterene on the opposing field, as now Weezing taunts the Hatterene, which is not the target that it wanted to be able to connect with. So now it is going to be the tri attack that comes through. Hatterene does get knocked out here, but James's Porygon 2 is still up and kicking. Yeah, that was a great play by Phil, actually. So predicting the ally switch, the taunt, uh, you know, in that position, you could obviously just go for uh, like Trick Room with a Hatterene as well. Also surprised to see that it's not Magic Bounce, but some players opt to not run Magic Bounce out of fear from, you know, Carding Shot and Cinnaroar. So, yeah, Phil covers the uh, Ally Switch option by doubling up into the slot and probably gets the best end of the trade-off. But, uh, you know, now you still have to deal with, like, Taunt is so good, but uh, you still have to deal with the potential mind games of another Ally Switch. One thing James could do here is just go for another Ally Switch, Dynamax the Azumarill, and then go for, like, Max Steel Spike onto the Weezing. If that's enough to pick up a knockout, you know, uh, then it's going to be really tough, I think, for Phil to be able to win this. And the main reason for that is that Phil just doesn't have that much damage out on the field right now. I think that is kind of just one of the, you know, key problems of Weezing. Uh, however, in this case, at least it has that super effective sludge bomb against the but this is the perfect time for Azumarill to Dynamax. Uh, Weezing at least is able to shut down abilities right now, but I think a double up, yeah, I mean, here it's interesting. Do you go for the allies with the Porygon, or do you just double up onto the Weezing slot and try to pick up a knockout onto it? We'll have to see, because the top will at least make the Porygon a little bit less useful. Let's see what James decides to go for, as it is going to be that taunt again from Phil's Weezing this time. Then it's Mark onto the Porygon 2 on James's side and a recover. So nice safe play coming out from Phil just to make sure that the Porygon 2 is nice and healthy. But then for James to attack and James goes for the max steel spike that we got a chance to see from the steel roller before. Weezing gets taken down to a little bit below half from that one attack coming out from this Azumarill. But what did this Porygon do to try to do? And it was going for the Trick Room. I can't use it now after the taunt. Yeah, so Phil, you know, at least gets a pretty good end of that trade-off. He actually has the Rotom in the back. I think that's actually the perfect Pokemon to have as the last one to potentially deal with Porygon and Azumarill. So, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Phil had two potential plays he could make here. I was thinking he could maybe just, like, you know, stay in with the Weezing and sacrifice it, stall out the Dynamax instead. The risk is now you switch in the uh, Rotom. Uh, you also, 
you know, now activate Azumarill's ability, and Porygon gets the download boost as well. And it is going to be that special attack mm -hmm. increase. So I feel like that risk was a little bit switchy because, uh, or a little bit risky, not switchy. Uh, because your main win condition at this point, I feel like, is that Rotom. Uh, now you've got Azumarill out. If uh, the Rotom gets targeted here, uh, it's going to spell really, really bad news for uh, Phil. Well, it's going to be the Porygon 2 that takes that try attack, but let's see where this Max Steel Spike goes and goes into the Rotom. Ooh, it takes a good chunk of damage, but not too bad. Yeah, good chunk of damage is able to survive. The defense boosts don't really provide any value for James right now either. Uh, however, Phil is still staring down a Dynamax Zoom on, on its last turn, and he doesn't have Protect on the Rotom. This is exactly why I would have liked to see Phil stall out the uh, Dynamax first and then go from there. Sporeon also has two increased stages, a special attack as well, so it's doing so much damage to try attack. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you can see just how much of a factor download actually plays uh, from both Porygons. I think Porygon actually may be the most important Pokemon. Uh, in, in the matchup for both players here, uh, outside of you know, the Dynamax Pokemon. So, I think what's really tough for Phil now is that he's just going to take so much damage, and without the ability to protect on the uh, Rotom and Tritech doing so much damage, uh, Rotom is just really, yeah, like, it gets a nasty plot off here, but is it really going to be able to stay on the field? Like, James has to respect it this turn, right? Yeah, Let's James see. has to do something about that Rotom, but Tri-Attack comes through onto the Galarian. We think that just switched in, does get the knockout, that leaves Azumarill free to go after <laughs> this fan Rotom, but a special attack increase again for James's Porygon 2 as the Max Geyser now getting shown from Azumarill. And nope, even after that one nasty plot, it's not going to stick around on the field long enough to be able to use it. Yeah, and I, you don't ever really see this, right? Download is normally an ability that activates once and you know you stay on the field on the road time. You, or sorry, with the Porygon, you switch it out. You can maybe give it a boost, but in this game, Porygon got three boosts. Like, it's at plus three special attack mm -hmm. right now. So if anything, Phil's Weasling actually worked against him at the end of the day, specifically because of this Porygon interaction. This is one of the many reasons why mm -hmm. Weasling is a really, really tough Pokemon to use. I think might have been better on Phil's end to just not have switched out that Weezing, uh, you know, as early as he did, because the problem was that there were just so many turns of Dynamax and Zumo that Phil had to deal with, then uh, once again, if you look at Phil's team, there really wasn't that much damage coming off from it. I would have loved to see maybe a Rotom, uh, like, base game from the early game mm -hmm. where you put on pressure immediately with a nasty flop, but uh, the problem was that, yeah, Phil committed the Dynamax to Arcanine, which meant that there was a very little good, very few good answers against the late game Zumo. Yeah, uh, James gonna be able to fire off some pretty hefty attacks here as the tri attack comes through and the liquidation now in the rain as well. Uh, Porygon 2 for Phil might have been able to go for the recover, but the recover is not gonna be enough if James decides to go for the same set of attacks again. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna see oh. James take a 2-0 victory over Phil in our very first match on the broadcast today.